My name is Amber Marie. I'm 34 and I'm in the Far West Missouri Stake. Um, there's just one thing that I wanted to share briefly that has made all the difference for me as a single adult in the Church of Jesus Christ. I have finally learned the difference between a desire, my deepest desires, and my wants. And that has, has been so impactful for me. I just felt like I wanted to share that. I um, I feel like my wants are good, and I am a good person, and most of the things at this point in my life are good. Uh, there's nothing wrong with my wants. But I've learned that my deepest desires are actually those things that are more valuable to me now and shape my life. And when I say my deepest desires, I'm actually referring to my pre-mortal desires. I, I take the pre-mortal life very literally, and and I, and I really believe it with all of my heart. And that has been huge for me. I think that what I wanted and what I desired then um, is what is shaping my life today. So let me explain this a little better. I, I think about the pre-mortal life all the time, actually. Um, and mostly because I have a, a real relationship with Father, with Heavenly Father. He is very real to me. And I'm a daddy's girl, a Heavenly Daddy's girl. Um, for sure. And so I often would just think about our relationship in pre-mortality. And obviously this isn't doctrinal and it's not even um, like a memory. It's not true in that sense. But for me, it's just been a, um, a vehicle that the Spirit has used to teach me and help me find greater peace and joy in my life. Um, but I imagine oftentimes that I have this special place uh, in the pre-mortal realms um, where Father and I would spend time, and I always imagine this beautiful garden and a stone bench. And I, I feel so strongly that at one point before I came to this place we call Earth, that Father sat down with me on our bench and he said, Ember Marie, what do you want more than anything? What do you want from Earth? Like, what is your deepest desire? I can't remember what I said, but I, I would guess that I probably said, Father, I, I've been watching you. I noticed that the love that you have is so, it's gripping it and it heals. When you take us into your arms or when you love us, it's healing, it's powerful. I want to love like you. I, I suspect I would have said something like that. I don't know. But um, I hold to that when life gets so hard and when my wants don't happen and when life I, it's tempting to feel like I'm forgotten like life is passing me by and I have been forgotten and the the desires I had that were good the wants that I had that were good are passing by and time's passing and all those things and and before it was it was um I love how President Nelson calls it so myopic. When you focus on that one thing, it just takes over your life and it's, it's dark, the dark place to be and I know we've all been there. But when I really ponder this experience and I think about the trust that I have in Father, it blows all of my fear away because I know that everything that's happening to me is literally tailor-made to fulfill and to realize my pre-mortal desires. I truly believe that. So the fact that I'm still single, I really believe that that is a part of the plan and helping me fulfill my deepest desires. Being able to connect to people and have compassion for them and to know just a glimpse. I'm not Abraham yet by any means, but at least a glimpse of what they experienced is so precious to me. Every experience now I go through when something bad happens or something hard happens to me, I I rejoice in the fact that now I can connect to another group of people or I can connect to a new person that I couldn't have connected to before. And I know that all these things are part of the plan that I helped, and this is not doctrine, it's like I said, but I believe that we tailor made our journey and our, our plan and our experience here in mortality with Father. I don't think he's just a, a great teacher that's like, okay, how could I make this person the best scholar possible? Like, I'm gonna design a plan for them. I don't think so. I think that he knew who we were and what we wanted and he 
hand in hand with us, said, okay, here's what mortality is gonna look like for her and for him. And it's not just all about us. A lot of our life experiences are for other people too. Their desires, their plan is connected to ours. So a lot of things that happen to us are for our sakes or for someone else's, but it's always, always tailor-made to the development of who we want to be and what we want more than anything. And I'm, I'm confident because of the sacred experiences and, if, and the feeling that I have that that's true and it just tra- strengthens me and it helps me actually get kind of, I don't know, exhilarated. When something crazy happens, not maybe in the moment, but afterwards, I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you, Father, that happened. Thank you for the opportunity I had to finally, you know, get my heart broken, like, or whatever it is, because I now have this experience, which we know is about mortality, but also I have a connection. And I I value the reality that Father is unfolding my deepest desires. And I know that if we continue to trust Him and obey everything that he places in our laps that he will make our dreams come true 100 percent, every single one of them and that might not be our wants that might not be what we think our dreams are but they are tailored to our deepest dreams even if they're forgotten to us and i testify that god is a living living god and that he is a father and he's a he's a tender a loving personal parent and that he has not forgotten you, and he has not forgotten me. And I leave this testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.